was a tremendous honor and pleasure it is for me uh, to uh, participate in this in this summit and to bring you uh, a perspective from the world of, of Caribbean higher education, uh, the sector that I, I represent. And yes, uh, I do represent the, the University of the West Indies, but I also wear uh, another hat, which is uh, the president of Universities Caribbean, which is uh, an association of uh, 53 universities and research institutes across the Caribbean, uh, including, of course, the, the, the Spanish-speaking Caribbean, French-Dutch-speaking Caribbean. Uh, so we are an umbrella organization uh, crafting best we can the future for the role of higher education in the development process of, of our region. And uh, I wish to, to iterate, why, why are we so hands, sleeves rolled up and, 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 and pressing on? Because we're concerned about the economic transformation of this region. We're concerned about the, the competitiveness of our industries. We are concerned about our inability to, to achieve the levels of, of sustainable economic development that we, we wish to maintain healthy lifestyles uh, in, our, in our region. That, of course, suggests that we are also concerned about the issue of social growth. Uh, from the academic perspective, we tend not to dichotomize uh, economic growth and social growth. Uh, for us, they are dialectically interacted and we are seen in the Caribbean at the moment is a clear manifestation of this, that uh, while we are having difficulty positioning our economy, that growth, we are also seeing increasing social instability, so uh, discourse about violence and how that in turn is impacting the rest of the ecosystem. In other words, we must be concerned about social growth, that is social sophistication. And, you know, social sophistication is very important to economic growth. And the acid test of this is can a, a senior citizen walk the streets in peace? Uh, can any citizen sit in a community park and enjoy social living and, and do so in a, a harmonious fashion? So, yes, we have concerns with economic growth, but we also have concerns with social growth, and they are interacted. Now, what we have experienced in the last 10 years since 2007, 2008, when the, the global financial uh, meltdown so adversely impacted Caribbean economies, and how we have been so sluggish in recovering from that. We have done our own analysis of this. And what we have found, broadly speaking, is that at the intersection of, of economic growth and social growth is the crisis of social capital formation. We have a crisis in social capital formation. The level at which we are producing skills and the commensurate consciousness to associate with those skills, that we are not producing enough of it, and we also need to enhance the quality of it. This is, this is the fundamental truth, that we don't necessarily have a crisis of capital shortage uh, in the Caribbean world. We have a crisis of social skills, entrepreneurial skills, economic and financial skills. The modern skills that are required to make an economic sector competitive in the global world at this moment, we have a shortage of skills in this area. And the university sector which is responsible for the generation of these skills. And we're not speaking simply of academic skills. Let's be clear on this. We are speaking about technical skills, professional skills in the full diversity, artisan skills, all of the skills necessary to make competitive and productive the various sectors of our 
of our Caribbean economy, especially now, as we are speaking about digital transformation. We are speaking about the competitiveness of industries, generally speaking. When we do this analysis, we are finding that we do have a shortage of skills. And these skills, in turn, might be responsible for the inability to mobilize the liquidity within our financial system to put that liquidity to work in production and manufacturing and services. This shortage of, show, of social capital formation is also affecting the capacity of the region to be innovative around existing activities. And of course, we can measure the, the innovation quotient of any given society in respect of what it is you are doing now, what has given you some growth in the past, what has brought you to this moment, and what you now need to move to the higher level, a more competitive level. And at the same time, what we need to enable each individual, not just industry and sectors, but each individual to be a self-innovating, self-productive unit within within the economy. We were very concerned, of course, of the implications um, last year when uh, one of our ministers, and it was interesting listening to Minister Shaw, but to hear one of our ministers making the observation that only 17% of the Jamaica labor force was certified. Uh, of course, this, this, this is chronically low. It, it is probably a Caribbean average but we do know that we just don't have enough of the people within our labor force from the professional management, the artisan working uh, in their small shops and producing skills to generate value. We have a concern. Now, if you make the comparative analysis, say, for example, with Southeast Asia, which has been uh, credited of having transformed the economies in short time, and if you look at how they went about doing that, they went about solving the problem of social capital formation. And it was a revolution in social capital formation that led to the transformational experiences which they had in the economy. And that process was built around an alignment between the skill producing sector, the colleges, the institutes, the universities, in alignment with industry, primarily um, private industry, but also significantly public, public sectors, driving that alignment together, the, the state performing the role of creating a, a coherence so that if you, if you bring the universities and un entrepreneurs together, how do you move that research out of the academic faculties into the factories. And that, that was a real highway to economic transformation. The migration of research, R&D, out of institutional faculties, into the factories, entrepreneurs and academics merged together in a common ecosystem, an intersectoral bond that generated the kind of lift that we do need. And we in the Caribbean are struggling to achieve that. We are struggling to achieve that. We are looking at that, we are working towards it, but there are all kinds of tensions and inertias. Uh, there's a fair amount of finger pointing going on in the region, but we are trying our best to put this together. If you take, for example, what we have just done at the University of the West Indies uh, and deciding to work with the, the, the Sandals Corporation, to bring entrepreneurship and innovation and research and teaching together. And we have just signed up to establish a trilateral agreement with Sandals, the University of the West Indies and the Florida International University. Three forces coming together in order to create a common institute, the Butch Stewart Institute for Hospitality, Training and Tourism Development. What is the purpose? post-pandemic innovation in the tourism sector. The new ideas, the new strategies, marketing, research, 
building up the skill sets of frontline workers and professionals behind the scene, enhancing all of that to make this sector far more aggressive globally in a change in circumstance. That's an example of the kind of thing that we are seeking to do. But we do know the following, that the sluggishness of the Caribbean economy to recover from the 07 08 global meltdown has a great deal to do with this shortage of the skill sets, the social capital, and the related consciousness to drive our sectors forward. I believe that it has to do fundamentally with the following fact. In the Caribbean, we have the lowest enrollment in post-secondary education in the hemisphere. From Alaska to Argentina, we in the Caribbean, in the age cohort 18 to 30, that's the youth cohort, that's the UNESCO approved age cohort for youth, 18 to 30. In that age cohort in the Caribbean, we have the lowest enrollment in post-secondary education in the entire hemisphere. So we have a crisis of access to post-secondary education and the transformation of that into a tertiary consciousness that can drive entrepreneurship, digital transformation, attract direct foreign investment, and what have we. And despite the fact that we have the lowest enrollment in post-secondary higher education, there is still a tendency in the Caribbean to create policies to reduce that number even more so even more so, we see a threat to increase in enrollment by policies and initiatives, driving the tertiary sector to stand to say, no, we are going in the wrong direction. You are going in the wrong direction. This is very important, very important, because every model of economic development that we have looked at has shown that a country's potential for economic transformation is an expression of the percentage of its citizens who are exposed to professional training, skills development, academic training, in order to drive productivity and innovation. So what we need is a revolution in research and development, social capital formation, access to skills, skills training, professional training, academic training. We need a revolution in the Caribbean. That and only that can lay the foundation for simultaneous economic growth and social growth. Because what we don't want is economic growth leading to social decline. Social decline as expressed in poverty, social decline as expressed in crime and insecurity, but economic growth indicators suggesting economic growth what we want is growth that is going to fertilize the society. We do not need growth that is going to result in profitability for a slither of our societies. We are already classified as among some of the most unequal societies in the world. What we don't want is economic growth that exacerbates that inequality within our societies that we have seen consistently in recent decades. Neither do we want economic growth that results in increased poverty. We have seen that in one of our largest economies in the Caribbean, that after 15 years of persistent economic growth, poverty had increased. That's the result of the mismatch, the non-alignment between economic growth, social capital formation, and social sophistication. We have a great opportunity now to use the digital technology the online technology. We have a wonderful opportunity now to do that effectively at a high level at lower cost by building out access to online technology for teaching, for research, and so on. So this is our challenge. And I speak from the perspective of the sector which I represent, which is the Caribbean higher education space and how it connects to all of the 
efforts and the initiatives that we want to achieve around economic transformation and growth, but also social growth and social, social sophistication. And what we are treating with now is this crisis of inadequate social capital formation that is holding back our region. It's holding back our economies in terms of entrepreneurship, innovation, competitiveness, and at the same time, driving social instability within our societies. So we have a big challenge at hand. The importance of, I, I think, this dialogue and this summit is to show how we can connect all of these conversations in order to constitute a holistic understanding of what Caribbean economic and social transformation is all about. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank <laughs> you.